as we've seen throughout the week. Everyone seems to be taking away from the Durham report whatever it is they want to take away from it. Depending on to whom you listen, the report is both an explosive bombshell that will dismantle a disgraced FBI, and also a giant nothing burger and waste of taxpayers' time and money. Knowledge is malleable, and all the more so with the advent of AI. Parts of the Bible have already been rewritten by AI to better fit somebody's worldview. Why not rewrite the Durham report to make it officially say whatever we want it to say? When nothing means nothing because a computer can just rewrite it at any point, how can we stay safe? Something's Happening Here concludes our episode, The Devil and John Durham, by looking once again at artificial intelligence. Good afternoon, friends. Today is Friday if you're watching this as it broadcasts and you made it through another week with us on Something's Happening Here. I, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this new thing we're doing in season two, which is to have an AI update as part of every show. We actually didn't plan to do that. At, and the producer and I were envisioning this, this abbreviated season two, but the world just demands it. This is, this is a revolution that's happening now and it changes so quickly. Um, so I, I, I hope that you've been enjoying these AI updates and based on the view counts on our various videos on the platforms, it seems like you are. Today's not gonna be any different. We are looking at uh, how AI is being used against the Bible. Although the people who did this are going to say they're doing it in favor of the Bible, but obviously I disagree. Um, so let's, Let's get right to it. The article for today is from WPDE.com, which is, I guess, a local ABC affiliate. And it's called PETA, which is the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. PETA rewrites part of the Bible using AI to make it more, quote, vegan. Now, f f <laughs> full disclosure here, uh, I, I used to eat a vegan diet. For like years I did this, and it was for health reasons, and it actually did help me tremendously to get my health under control. So I'm not like against vegan diets per se. It's actually been a huge benefit to me personally and to my family. Um, I, I attribute a lot of the ongoing kind of strength and vitality and even academic success of my children to this kind of diet that we uh, have raised them on, uh, vegan and, and very heavily vegetarian. What I don't like is PETA, <laughs> because PETA is really, um, in my humble opinion, it is an unethical organization trying to co-opt the concept of ethics um, in their own name. Let's read what they're doing to the Bible here, okay? People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals has announced that it used artificial intelligence to rewrite the Bible's book of Genesis in an effort to make it more animal-friendly and vegan. <clears throat> in a news release on May the 3rd, PETA said that, quote, in the beginning, all animals were treated with respect, which actually is a true statement. <laughs> and so PETA has given Genesis a, quote, modern makeover using chat GPT that it hopes will appeal to Generation Z. The message in Genesis is that God created every sentient being. He saw that they were good and he gave them greens for sustenance, Peter says in the detail of the book's listing and its online shop. By the way, you can buy this AI-generated book of Genesis um, from Peter. I think it's like two or three bucks. It says so at the end of the article. In this new text, we include updated moral lessons and modern-day applications fit for the 21st century. This interpretation reminds readers to treat every member of God's creation with love, kindness, and respect. And we'll jump down a little bit here. PETA says it will use its chat GPT AI rewrite of the Bible to, quote, send a can't-be-missed animal rights message filled with vegan teachings with a, quote, new cruelty-free story of creation. The rewrite is titled The Book, colon, PETA's version of the creation story. And then this is the last thing I'll read to you. Among other new interpretations, in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham travels to the land of Moriah and befriends a gentle and befriends a gentle lamb to show his reverence and respect for God's creation rather than slaughtering a ram to demonstrate his faith. 
much as human sacrifice, once a reality, is now outlawed all over the world, PETA says in its new release. Did you catch that PETA equates the sacrifice of an animal to human sacrifice? And because one of them is illegal everywhere, therefore the other should be illegal everywhere? What's the theological problem here? It's not just me being cantankerous. This is a theological problem. That's because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It says that plainly in the book of Hebrews somewhere. I don't have it in front of me. But it says it plainly. And that's the, that, that's, that's the entire problem of Genesis chapter 4 between Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain did not bring the proper sacrifice. He brought a plate of vegetables, and there's no shedding of blood in plant matter that way. Whereas Abel, his righteous brother, did what God told him to do, brought an animal and sacrificed it. The reason that blood has to be shed for the remission of sins is because Jesus is the only one who can take away your sin. And he had to die on a cross for that. He had to take your sin upon himself and then shed his blood in that particular way so that salvation could be offered. Every sacrifice in the Bible prior to the cross was a faith exercise anticipating the cross. So there's nothing without the shedding of blood that can accurately prophesy Jesus on the cross. So for, for Peter to just rewrite this incredible story of Abraham going up to Mount Moriah to ostensibly sacrifice his son Isaac, but then at the last second, God intervenes and provides a ram for sacrifice instead of Isaac. Man, that is such a powerful story. That's like the origin point for all monotheism worldwide is that story. It perfectly prefigures God the Father through the person of Abraham. It prefigures Jesus Christ in the person of Isaac, but not really. That's actually a detail lots of people get wrong, um, you know, because Isaac is the son who's being sacrificed, just like Jesus is the son of God who is ultimately sacrificed on a cross. That's true, but it's an imperfect analogy because Isaac doesn't actually die. Isaac is released and something else dies in his place, which really makes that ram the true image of Jesus in that story. You and I are Isaac on that altar deserving to be killed due to our sin, but then here comes the sacrifice to take our place, right? Jesus takes our place and we live while he dies. It's an incredible story, incredibly powerful. And then Peter comes along and says, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's just take Jesus out of that story and Abraham's gonna give that ram a hug instead. And that's how God receives Abraham's worship. It is theologically backwards. It's theologically nonsensical. And what it does is betray that no one at PETA actually understands the Bible. No one at PETA actually understands salvation. Uh, no one, certainly at least in this particular experiment of PETA's, seems to have any problem with this at all. All right, so what is this? How, how do we understand this spiritually? What's the point of going through this? Well, one point is that, uh-oh, AI is rewriting the Bible. And that means you better go get yourselves a paper Bible where you can actually open the pages. Where a computer can't like sneak into your house and change it because you know what? I can't necessarily trust anything on my phone if a computer can just come along and change it. And as I mentioned in the opener, like we're, I'm talking about the scripture uh, being affected by AI, and that's ultimately what we care about on this show. But who is to say that AI can't change a foundational document? We've been talking about the Durham report all week and how the conservatives view it one way and the liberals view it a different way. And they have the same exact data set, but seem to live in parallel worlds <laughs> next to each other. Well, what if ChatGPT decides that it's, it's going to create a finalized version of the Durham report that backs up its own particular point of view and can just like change all the electronic versions of it? I know that sounds like science fiction, but we kind of live in science fiction these days, don't we? I know that's not happening yet, but just envision 
What does it mean if AI is already rewriting like the oldest foundational document on earth, the Bible? The book of Genesis itself is like, what, 3,500 years old, something like that? And yet it's just rewriting it. So lesson number one is go get yourself a paper Bible. Chances are you have one in your house already, but dust it off, open it up, read it, put it in your brain. Put it in your brain where no computer can take it away. Also, <clears throat> more broadly, I'm going to make that same point from the scripture. Daniel chapter 12, the very end of that very powerful book. God says to Daniel in verse uh, 10 that many, and he's talking about our day, like he's talking about really all of time, but then specifically our day in the time of the end, many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. How do we know the difference between one and the other? It continues, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So hallelujah, you want to be in the group of the wise, and so do I. How do we do that? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 tells us that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise. Wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the Bible itself is telling you, you want divine wisdom? Go read God's word. The Holy Scriptures will make you wise and give you that level of wisdom that you need. And do you really need it? How essential is it? It's life and death essential, friends. Revelation chapter 13, in verse 18, this is literally the verse in which we find that strange number, 666. And it begins by saying, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Are you going to be able to properly decipher that without divine wisdom? As someone who's studied this for 15 years, let me tell you, the answer is no. You're not going to accurately decipher this using earthly wisdom. You need to be tapped into God's wisdom through the Holy Scriptures. Similarly, I mean, you need wisdom to avoid the mark of the beast. But in Revelation 17, we're told we also need wisdom to decipher who is the beast in the first place. Verse 9, chapter 17, verse 9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. This is that seven-headed beast, right? And those seven heads represent seven mountains on which the woman is sitting. There, there are also seven kings. We've talked about this on the show in the past. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. I'm not going to pick that apart for you in the minute we have left. But my point is, these are deep mysteries. And we're going to need to know the answer to these mysteries in order to make it through the confusing days which are still to come. So if you want to avoid the mark of the beast and you want to avoid the beast in its entirety because you can identify it and run the other way, you need wisdom. So go get that Bible of yours, dust it off, put it someplace safe, and ultimately the safest place is in your mind, in your brain, okay, where no computer can take it away. Let's pray. Father, I don't know why, but many people find it very difficult to read your word and then to memorize your word. And if there are any of our viewers who are identifying with that description, Lord, I want to know your word, but it's just too hard. I can't do it. Give them grace. Give them the wisdom that they need on the front end to connect with the wisdom that is buried in your scripture. Father, do all this work for us because we can't do it ourselves and yet we realize it is so important. If we need to stand up against AI that can just change anything it wants to, then we have to know something that cannot be changed. And you have told us that heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle will pass from the law until all is fulfilled. So Father, give us that enduring wisdom of your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And that's it. We've made it through another week, friends. And so come on back next week. We have just a, really a couple more episodes in this abbreviated season two, but I don't want you to miss a single one of them. So one more time for the week. If you're on Facebook, please like our page. The page you're on right now watching this. Just like it and you'll become a follower of it. If you go into the guts and to the, like the, the settings of the page, you can change your video notifications as well. On YouTube, you find the Talking Donkey International channel, subscribe to it and hit the notification bell, or just go to talkingdonkeyinternational.org slash podcast. You find the whole archive of all of our shows there. You can bookmark that page. Or if you prefer Rumble, and some of us do, go to rumble.com and uh, find our channel and hit the follow button there. Or something's happening here.locals.com. You can join our free community there and even better, become a paid supporter for additional content and also to help us stay on the air. We've got a lot of expenses coming up over the next couple months here and you are going to help us to meet them. May God bless you all. I hope you have a great weekend and come on back Monday for more Something's Happening Here. I'm Steve Hicks and may God bless you.